welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason and this is your daily relaxation hypnosis session for stress, anxiety and uh, panic attacks. The idea of these sessions really is to not just give you techniques where you can uh, reduce anxiety and stress in those moments that you require them. It's also an opportunity to daily do something different, to take a few minutes out of your day, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, depending on how long the session lasts. Giving yourself some space out of the day, giving yourself you time, you know, just for you, where you don't have to think about anything else, don't have to think about anybody else, don't have to plan anything, don't have to do anything, it really is just some time for you. And I think that's important that we all have that. We don't all put the effort in to make that time. Um, I can be just as guilty as anyone else for forgetting to take that time out. But it is important for you, for your health, for your mental well-being, for your physical well-being. So although it is a choice of course like everything else is a choice it's something that is important for you to do to take time out of your day just for a short period and one of the benefits one of many of listening to these videos, these MP3s, is everything goes into your mind. Even those things that maybe you didn't really take much notice of or wasn't particularly interested in, goes in there, it all sticks in there. And then your mind uses what is necessary, what is needed, what is helpful, what is useful to you and your life is then processed, is then used, is then put into action for those moments that you need it. Just makes your life a little bit easier to deal with because you're then ready for whatever happens naturally and effortlessly something in your mind just kicks in and you're able to deal with things in a more relaxed way allowing you to feel karma within yourself regardless of what's going on because the most important thing is that you're able to hold on to your own sense of self no matter what's happening around you, outside you, in your life, with people you care about and love, you still need to be able to hold on and be in touch with yourself. Because ultimately, you're the person who is responsible for your own well-being. You are your own guardian. And that's, I think, quite an important thing to remember. You need to take care of yourself. I'm not talking about eating well or all of those things because I guess that's... Some of that is obvious, but also taking care of yourself emotionally for me 
is possibly the most important thing you could ever do. And by watching these videos, by listening to uh, various different sessions that I've done, it all fits in together. It's all connected in some way, which moves towards allowing you to have more freedom. More freedom to think for yourself, more freedom not just to think for yourself, because we all can think, but it's being able to have that space in your mind where you can just step back that space which is yours nobody else can get inside there it's your space it's your mind no one can control your mind you have the sole access to your mind when you listen to my sessions you give me permission to be part of your mind for the time that we're here together. But ultimately, it's your mind. You're in control of your mind. You're responsible for your mind. So you need to be able to just take that time out every day to rejuvenate yourself. To love yourself, to show yourself that you care. Because sometimes we can be so busy helping other people that we forget and we neglect ourselves. And that's not fair. It's not fair on you. There's enough love to go around for everyone. There's enough kindness in your heart for yourself and for others. But it must be for yourself. There's no point being kind to everyone else unless you're being kind to yourself. Because ultimately, if you're not being kind to yourself, that's just abuse. That's unkind. And it's not on. I'm telling you off. I'm telling you off now. Be kind to yourself. I'm waggling my finger. You must be kind to yourself. You must show yourself love. It's not an option. Nearly everything I say is an option. Nearly everything I say is you can feel this way. You can do this. When it comes to being kind to yourself and loving yourself as a must. It's not an option. There's no conversation needed for this. It's not a case of, um, you must, and let's talk about it, it's a case of, you must, and how can you do it? If you're not loving yourself already, how can you get to the point where you are loving yourself or where you are showing yourself more kindness. And you can start by giving yourself some time every day where you can reflect, where you can meditate, where you can um, be mindful, you know, all those kinds of things. It's kind of a mixture. These sessions are a mixture of lots of different um, mental states, mental states as in thoughts, as in feelings, as in energy within your mind and your body, connected as it is, to a point where you feel different. That's the whole point, is when you watch these videos and you listen to these videos, or the MP3s, you feel different. You may not know why you feel different, but ultimately you feel different in a positive way. You feel something's changed in your mind and in your body.
something, a feeling of comfort in your chest and your stomach, a lightness. And your shoulders can feel looser, as if, I know it's an old cliche, but as if you actually have let something off, like you were carrying something around before, and now you've just dropped it. You let it just roll off your shoulders onto the floor, and you just walked away. And your shoulders feel so much more relaxed. Because sometimes you don't realize how stressed your body parts are until you relax those body parts. That's when you, you can think, wait a minute. They really were stressed. It's like when someone massages you. I don't know if you ever, someone said, oh, do you want to massage or massage your neck or your back? And you say, no, I'm fine. I don't need a massage. And then they, they sort of want to do it anyway and you let them. And you realize then how tense your muscles are. You didn't realize before because you're so used to being that way that you're just, you're accustomed to it. But when they start digging their fingers into the muscles and massaging the different um, tissues in your back and in your neck and your shoulders, and you start to have that experience of comfort and it's pleasure, isn't it? Even if it hurts a little bit when they're doing it, as the tension starts to get released in your shoulders, your back and your, and your neck. There's a degree of pleasure is there, that relief. You know, uh, a simplistic way would be uh, when you've got gas and you've managed to relieve the gas by burping or whatever. There's that comfort you have. And even though most of the time you feel not gassy, when you do get that gas out, you feel nice. But isn't it funny how we don't appreciate necessarily as much that feeling when we have it most of the time? It's only when you take away the feeling that we realize that that feeling was nice and we want it back. You know, the feeling of comfort, the feeling of not having gas. In the same way as a headache, you know, perhaps we're not so conscious and aware and grateful of our head when it's fine. But when you have a headache, you really, really want that headache gone. And when it does go, maybe you take some headache tablets or maybe you do some hypnosis for you know headache pain. Or maybe you go to sleep and you wake up and it's gone. And you just feel wonderful. There's a real wonderful feeling of relief and release. And it can be quite a weird sensation, really, in a sense of it feels really nice because your head's loose and light. But before the headache, and probably most of the time, your head was in the same position, maybe. The same feeling, but you didn't notice it, didn't appreciate it, didn't enjoy that feeling because you weren't focusing on the nice feelings that you have. And the more often you focus on those comfortable feelings, those comfortable parts of your body, the more relaxed you'll feel because the more you'll have those feelings because you get used to it. You'll consciously start to really expect to feel more comfort. And expectation is such a powerful thing. So if you expect to wake up feeling relaxed, calm and alert, if you really expect that, then there's a good chance that's what's going to happen. 
when you listen to my sessions, when you before you press play on any of my videos really, you're going to expect, if you've watched them in the past, you're going to expect to feel relaxed, to feel calmer, both mentally, physically and emotionally. And it's natural, because that will happen, even if it's not a relaxation session, even if it's a, a session for chronic pain or tinnitus, or uh, it could be anything, something about eating, diet or smoking, you're still going to have that level of relaxation naturally occur, because that's what you expect. Because that's what you've got, that's your normal reaction to watching or listening to my voice. Something changes in your brain, something kicks in, it's a trigger to just calm down, to just let go. And although I can't give you permission to relax and let go, you've given yourself permission to relax completely in your body and your mind whenever you hear my voice. You're the person that's given yourself permission for that to happen. So what else could you give yourself permission to do? Give yourself permission to take time out every day without fail. Every day, even if it's only for five or ten minutes, allow yourself that time. Even if you have to go into the bathroom or the toilet to do it, you know, maybe that's the only room where you won't be disturbed. It's worth doing. Just to give yourself some time. And of course, let's not forget, night time in bed. For example, I do hypnosis every evening as I lay in bed, going to sleep. I just do hypnosis every night without fail, every night. And it's a good place to relax. Let's face it, you're laying down. It is, in my experience, quite difficult to just relax and not fall asleep. I have a tendency of falling asleep um, if I try and do a long, long relaxation session. But I've used hypnosis for myself uh, when I stopped smoking. Um, this stuff works. I wouldn't devote my life to something that doesn't work. It'd just be pointless. So this stuff works, it really does help. So if you get anything out of this session, please take some time off every day. Give yourself a break. You can listen to one of my sessions, of course you can, or you can just do what you want to do, you can just talk to yourself. What I do is I talk to myself the same way as I talk to you. There's no difference at all. I just talk to myself as if I was talking to you. So I'm going to go through with you right now what I do every night. It variates. Variates, is that a word? It varies from night to night. I like to uh, swap things around and say different things and uh, just this just makes it more fun for me. And I've talked about this before. I have mentioned this before. What I do is when I'm in bed, I tell myself that as well as other things, I tell myself that I'm going to sleep deeply. But throughout the night, my airways are going to stay open at all times so that I can breathe easily 
and naturally through either my mouth or my nose and I can get that oxygen into my lungs all through the night so it's always open so if for any reason I'm laying in a position which is blocking my airways from being open then I'll automatically move into a position where my airways are open so that I can breathe continuously all the way through the night and then I talk about um, saying well the oxygen can then move to my lungs and my blood can be oxygenated oxygenated I'm not sure if that's the right word either but then that blood can move toward different parts of my body sending that healing energy that healing blood to heal my body as I sleep and to please focus on those parts of my body that need healing the most whichever part needs it and if there is a part I know that I'd like to give more attention to then I then tell myself and I focus on that part the other thing is I'm very specific about the blood going into my brain making sure the oxygen reaches my brain make sure that my brain is fully functional and heals throughout the night and that the blood and the oxygen is continuously able to access my brain all through the night so having trust having trust in my body having trust in my mind but at the same time I know that I've got um, potentially a well I've got sleep apnea so I've got sometimes my airways shut down they block up and the needs to be opened up again which is why I give myself give my unconscious mind commands or suggestions really but um, to make sure that the airways are always open so that there's no chance of them closing there's no chance of getting lack of oxygen to the brain which could lead to uh, serious things in the future if I'm not careful so you can adapt these self-hypnosis laying in bed at the beginning of your sleep adapt it to yourself adapt it to what you require for yourself so it might be um, a part of your body that you would like to have more comfort in maybe uh, some people have I don't know what they call it but you know when the leg moves around on its own and you can ask your unconscious mind to relax that leg more than the rest of your body to relax it so much that it just stays still that it doesn't have to do anything that it can just be relaxed and calm and you can spend you know 10 20 30 minutes an hour even relaxing each part of that leg over and over again giving it comfort giving it love because you know that's the thing and I, I keep going on about it but if you can really learn to love your body I mean love in the same way that you'd love a little baby the same way that I love Andre my son if you can love each part of your body the same way and give it the same care so if Andre hurt his leg I would be absolutely you know distraught and would um, do everything I could to help him and you know the same way I need to have that same love and caring for my own leg so 
So if you can feel that way about all the different parts of your body, including your mind, to have that love, to feel relaxed, to have that love not to be judgmental towards yourself, but also to know that you do have the ability to move on from past issues that have caused problems for you in the past that maybe you've been holding on to. And sometimes we do hold on to things we don't realise we're holding on to. So it's a case of maybe realising you've held on to something for way too long but at the same time as letting go, you also just accept that you held on to it for too long and maybe you won't do that again. But give yourself love and kindness so that you don't have a go at yourself and because then you just open more more hatred and you know putting more of the negativity in when actually what we all need is more love and kindness. So it might seem in some way that, you know, some people might say, well, what's love and kindness and talking about that? What's that got to do with being relaxed and dealing with stress and anxiety and panic attacks? A lot, a huge amount. In fact, you could say everything because the love enters every single aspect of your life which therefore transforms every single aspect of your life which means that those things that used to you used to feel like it was controlling you like stress like anxiety like panic attacks no longer have that power because when you put love in, love dissolves that stuff. It just dissolves. You know, like the Wicked Witch from um, The Wizard of Oz. That's what love does. Love is that water poured onto anxiety, stress and panic attacks. Love is the water being poured on the Wicked Witch and the anxiety the stress and the panic attacks. You can even imagine it, them saying, I'm melting. If it just dissolves. Making sure you've always got love available. And you can in your mind even imagine, visually seeing yourself pouring that love out of that bucket on top of that wicked witch which represents anxiety, stress and panic attacks if you want it to love always wins because in your heart there's just infinite room for love and in your mind there's infinite room for love but there's only a small amount of room available for hatred and negativity, stress, anxiety. The love is the bigger part. And we think, I think we just forget about it. We forget it's there. All you've got to do is look at a newborn baby or a little puppy or a little kitten or see somebody fall over, uh, maybe an elderly person fall over on the street and you go over to help them. That instant. That's the love. It's always there. It's always there. You've had it from the moment you were born. It's always been available. And it's the most powerful thing in the world. There's nothing more powerful. 
So I'm going to end this session on there. This is, uh, yeah, that's it. My name's Jason. There's nothing more to say on this session other than just maybe think about what I've said. Maybe think about it. It's going to be hard not to think about it because now once you've, once it's there, it's there, isn't it? It's uh, in your awareness. But try and take some time every day for your own, whether it's 10 minutes or half an hour. If you can listen to one of my sessions, use it for that. But if you don't have enough time for that, or if you're, if you're somewhere where the you know, you don't have access to my videos or MP3s. You can use that time just to get in touch with that love inside you. So take care of yourself. Enjoy the rest of your day. Feeling wonderful. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.